Good morning, uh, dear students. Uh, my yeah. name is Farhan Mazar, and today is uh, 8th of uh, May 2022. Right now, I am with the 11 Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. And uh, today, this uh, I will be making a video on a very important topic, and this is the part A of that topic. We are going to study together uh, the learner guide, which is issued by the uh, Cambridge. And uh, this is for the learner guide for the Cambridge O Levels Physics 5054. And this is for the examination from 2016 to 2022. It's a very important document, and we will try to study in this video. In this uh, document, uh, we have a checklist of the of the topics, and we will try to do that checklist uh, with my students online. So let's start, and uh, hope you will. So this document, by the name of the Learner Guide, issued by the Cambridge O Levels, this is from the for the examination from 2016 to 2022, and we will try to. Uh, work on this uh, document. So uh, let's 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 start. So this is the learner guide, and okay. So let me go to the view. Go to the full screen view, and let me increase the size so you can see also very clearly what is written here. So how you will be tested, examination advice, what will be tested, what you need to know, useful websites, appendices. So about the paper, uh, we will do this on the last, but first of all, I want you to go to the, we will do this later, but I want you to go to the, in this session. Okay, so let me increase the size. This is a very important, uh, the first topic here is physical quantities, units, and measurements. The first thing you should know is define the term scale and the vector. You, you, you should ask you yourself this question that if you know this or not, for example, scalar are the physical quantities which have uh, only the magnitude, vectors are the physical quantities which are completely described with the, the, with the uh, you know, uh, dimension. I mean, sorry, dimension, I said, I said direction and magnitude. So you should know this, okay? Find the result of the two vectors by a graphical method. Uh, you must have learned this. Uh, there are two laws by which we can <laughs> add the two vectors. One is called the triangular method in which we put the vectors in such a way that the, the first vector on its head, we put the tail of the second vector and then we join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. This is called triangular method. and you can you also have head to tail rule in the head to tail rule we add for example two or more than two vectors method is same we put the first vector on the head of the first vector we put the tail of the second vector on the head of the second vector we put the tail of the third vector for example if you have three vectors to be added then you join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector and that gives you the resultant vector and this is uh, this method is uh, used. Another method which we use to find the, uh, the resultant of two vectors is called the parallelogram law. In parallelogram law, what we do, we take two vectors to be added. We put them in such a way that the tails are joined. And we once you have put them such a way that the tails are together, then we we, we believe that they are the adjacent sides of a parallelogram and then we complete that parallelogram. Once that parallelogram is completed, then you join where the tails were joined with the opposite uh, uh, corner and that gives you the resultant. So this you should know. If you know, you can say to yourself that, okay, I know that. Uh, then the third part is which, know which of the following are scalars and which are the vectors, a very famous question frequently asked in the MCQs, uh, vectors, distance, vector is a, uh, for example, vectors are, dist distance is a scalar quantity, displacement is a vector quantity, length is a vector quantity, 
uh sorry length is a scalar quantity speed is a scalar quantity velocity is a vector quantity time is a scalar quantity acceleration is a vector quantity mass is a scalar quantity and force is a vector quantity this comes in the mcqs and is a very famous very famous very famous question it also sometimes come in paper too measurement techniques describe how to measure different lengths with the suitable accuracy using the tape rules micrometers and caliper the use of the vernier scale is not required okay uh, you know uh, for example uh, if you want to measure up to um, one tenth of a centimeter and uh, you can use a simple rule and a rule uh, normally the rules which available to us are are one meter long so if a length is more than 100 cm then you cannot use the rule or it becomes a little difficult to use the rule we can use the tape then tape can measure up to maybe 30 m maybe 50 m maybe 100 m the tape can be used the length can also be measured with the help long lens can also be measured with the help of uh, you know trundle wheel trundle wheel is a wheel with with a handle and you walk with it and every revolution means 50 cm and it produces a sound of click 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 and you count how many sounds are produced and normally it has a meter with it which tells you how much distance you have walked for short uh, lens we use uh, micrometer micrometer measures very small for example if you want to measure the thickness of a paper or you want to find the thickness of your hair or diameter of your hair or if you want to measure the diameter of a wire then you use micrometer micrometer can measure up to one uh, um one by i think uh, one by the the simple scale it can measure up to 1 by 10 of a centimeter and uh, the vernier caliper can measure up to 1 by 100 of a centimeter and the micrometer can measure up to 1 by 1000th of a uh, of a centimeter so according to this we use uh, the calipers they can be used the calipers are of two kinds two kinds one caliper is that complicated cal caliper which we call vernier caliper the vernier caliper can measure the diameter from the outside it can also measure the diameter of the tubes the glasses it can measure the internal diameter you should remember these words the internal diameter is very important it can measure the internal diameter okay so the use of a um, and the vernier caliper can also measure the depth so you should understand how to use them you have to decide that which instrument can be used then is describe how to measure different time intervals using clocks and the stopwatches we can measure the time intervals and by using a stopwatch and the use of the stopwatch is very frequent it is measured in it is used in our atp papers and in theory papers also the use of the stopwatch you have to show so and units and symbols are recognized and the use of the si system of units your teacher will have more information and you should rem you should know what is the si units of for example length is measured in meters and then you should also understand that how to convert the meter into centimeter or meter into millimeter or from millimeter back to meter and or from centimeter back so you should know the conversion and uh, the sometimes the time unit is very important because the time is sometimes given in milliseconds you have to convert it, it into seconds and sometimes it is in seconds you have to convert it into milliseconds another important thing is uh, the unit which we have to convert is the mass mass sometimes is given in kgs you have to convert it into grams and from grams sometimes you have to convert it into um you know uh, kilograms so sometimes the it is important to know sometime you have to convert the speed speed is sometimes given in the kilometer per hour and sometime in meter per second so you should know if you know then you put the tick there how to convert kilometer into meter per second from meter per second back to the uh, kilometer per second okay the second is kinematics kinematics speed velocity and acceleration so that is the first topic in our syllabus 
and if you know all these things put a tick in front of them i will share the link of this uh, i will share this file with you that will the link will be shared in the in my uh, in the description of this video i will put the share of the link of this video and uh, this document and you can download it and you can put your ticks okay speed velocity and acceleration state what is meant by speed so speed is distance divided by time the rate of uh, change of the distance that is known as speed what is meant by velocity velocity is uh, displacement divided by time so its rate of change of displacement calculate the average speed using average speed distance traveled by divided by time average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken so you should know this and, and we normally have uh, questions on it and then we have state what is meant by the uniform acceleration uniform acceleration means that equal change in the velocity in equal intervals of time that is known as the uniform acceleration uh, if you represent the uniform acceleration on a speed time graph it will be it will be a line with the constant gradient uh, so calculate the acceleration using and remember this newton's second law uh, that is this acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time taken so that is a very famous formula acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time taken you must have seen that this formula normally we say acceleration is equals to v minus u divided by t so if you know this formula and you have done questions on this formula it's, it put a take here explain what is meant by the non uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration means that uh, the change in the velocity in equal in terms of time is not uniform then we say it's non uniform acceleration if you represent this on the uh, speed time graph the the graph will be a curve either bending upward or bending downward but it not it will be not a straight line for example if you remember when something drops uh, from a certain height and there is a air resistance present then the deceleration produced and in that oh, sorry the acceleration produced in that body will be non uniform and that graph is always a curve not a straight line okay so that's the topic number 2 okay then we have the gra gra graphical analysis of the motion plot and use of the distance time graph remember the distance time graph and uh, on the y axis you will have the distance on the x axis you will have time and, uh, and the gradient of this is equals to the speed then we have plot and use of the speed time graph in the speed time graph on the x axis on the x axis when i click it something happens okay uh, in the speed time graph uh, on the x axis we have uh, speed, uh, time on the y axis we have speed and the gradient of the speed time graph will be equals to the acceleration and we are talking about the bodies who are moving in a straight line because when a body moves in a straight line the speed and the velocity will be uh, magnitude of them will be same and you should understand that the um, the area under the speed time graph is also is coming recognize the shape of the speed time graph for a body at rest uh, the speed time graph for a body at rest will be um, horizontal the graph will be a horizontal if the speed time graph becomes horizontal it means that the body is at rest and if the body is moving with the uniform speed the speed time graph uh, will be for a body at rest the speed time graph will be horizontal but it will be horizontal on the it will be horizontal but it will be on the x axis that that horizontal line will be on the x axis then it means that the speed time graph is showing that the body is at rest moving with the uniform speed if the body is moving with the uniform speed then it will be horizontal but not not on the x axis it will be horizontal simply and moving with the uniform acceleration when a body moves with the uniform acceleration the graph will be either going upward or going downward but it's it will be a straight line the speed time graph will be going upward but it is its gradient will not be changing it will be a straight line or it will be going downward but its gradient will be not changing so it will be a straight line so that is uniform acceleration moving with the non uniform acceleration the the speed time graph will be either going upward or going downward increasing curve or decreasing curve but it will be a curve 
for non uniform acceleration the speed time graph will be a curve calculate the area under a speed time graph to find the distance traveled by a body moving with a constant speed or constant acceleration so this frequently comes in our uh, physics paper this also comes in our maths paper and the speed time a graph is given and they ask you to find the distance traveled by the body area under the speed time graph is equals to the distance traveled and so area under the speed time graph sometimes it is in the shape of a rectangle sometimes it is in the shape of a triangle sometimes it is in the shape of the trapezium so if it's a triangle you you should be able to recognize the base of the triangle height of the triangle if it's in the form of a rectangle you should be able to recognize the length and the width of the rectangle and if it's in the shape of the trapezium then one thing you should understand is which two sides are the parallel sides and what is the height of the trapezium so if you know this and you have practice question on it you can put a tick here so free fall when the something is falling down straight the acceleration of the free fall for a body near to the earth is constant so when something falls and on the earth its its acceleration is uh, 10 meter per second square so know that it is about 10 meter per second uh, if you know these things oops sorry okay the value of the free fall uh, acceleration due to the free fall is 10 meter per second square describe in words the motion of bodies falling without air resistance when there is no air resistance so during the fall the acceleration remains constant during the fall the acceleration remains constant throughout the fall the acceleration remains 10 meter per second square and when you draw a speed time graph for the free fall it will be a straight line and its gradient will be constant because there is no air resistance present so but if the body is falling and uh, describe in words the motion of body is falling with the air resistance when a uh, body is falling down and there is air resistance so as the speed of the body will increase the air resistance will increase as the air resistance will be opposite to the motion so it will oppose the motion so uh, the resultant force will be equals to the weight minus the air resistance and uh, so that there will be a certain resultant force and gradually that resultant force will decrease as the body will gain the speed the the air resistance will increase so the resultant force which is weight minus air resistance that will decrease so at some time what happens uh, uh the the air resistance will become equals to the weight so when the air resistance will become equals to the weight what will happen the the the, the resultant force will become zero the body will no more accelerate the acceleration will become zero and the body will start falling with the constant velocity and we call that terminal velocity another important thing is uh, when uh, you open a parachute uh, your surface area becomes very large and the air resistance will become larger than your weight so the resultant force will become in the upward direction because the, the the air resistance will become more than your weight so the resultant force will be in the upward direction opposite to your motion whenever there is a resultant force opposite to the motion it's it acts like brakes and the speed of the body will decrease if you know all these things uh, put a tick here put a tick here then we have uh, this is the third chapter which is dynamics and balanced and unbalanced forces newton's third law sometimes they ask you to draw this that uh, every action has a reaction action and reaction they both are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and they act on different bodies so one very famous question is uh, what is the unit for both these quantities which are used in newton's third law they are forces and their unit is newton so if you know the newton's third law put a tick here and describe the fact of the balanced and unbalanced forces on a body if the forces are balanced the forces acting on the on on a body if they are balanced then uh, the resultant force will become zero and the acceleration of the body will become zero and the body will either remain at rest or it will move with a constant speed or velocity if the forces are unbalanced then there will be some resultant force if the resultant force is in the direction of the motion of the body the body will accelerate the speed will increase the velocity will increase or the direction of the motion will change if 
the resultant force is opposite uh, to the direction of the motion then the speed will start decreasing the body will decelerate so that's the effect of balanced and unbalanced forces and describe the way in which our forces may change the motion of a body the this is a very famous question frequently asked in cambridge exam um, when you apply a force on a body the motion of the body can be changed uh, you either the speed will increase or the speed will decrease or 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 the direction of the motion will change Okay, do the calculation using the equation. This is uh, Newton's second law of motion. F is equals to m. A very famous, famous question. Here, the force is the resultant force. Remember this word. Remember, mark my word. This F is equals to m a mass into acceleration. Here, the F is the resultant force. The force you applied from there, subtract the uh, frictional forces. Whatever is the remaining force, that is the force which you use in this uh, formula. If you know the mass and the acceleration, you can find the resultant force. If you know the resultant force and mass, you can find the acceleration. There are three quantities, resultant force, mass, and acceleration. Normally, two are known, and the third is question. And these numericals frequently, frequently, frequently come in Cambridge exam. F equals to ma. Here, the force must be in newtons. The mass must be in kg, and the acceleration must be in meter per second square. Okay, then we have the friction. Explain the effect of the friction on the motion of a body. You see, the friction uh, is always uh, it always opposes the motion of the body, and this is uh, due to the interlocking of the two bodies, which are are dragging over each other, or which the surfaces which are in contact with each other, and when they uh, they drag against each other, and they have ups and downs in the surface, no matter how smooth they are. They have ups and downs in them, so they are, they get interlocked into each other. So if you know this, uh, put a tick here. Okay, describe how the following effect friction between the wheels of a vehicle and the road, tire surface. Okay, so the treads, the treads, the pattern which is on the new tires, we call them tread, treads. If the tire has treads, uh, so. Uh, the friction depends upon the treads, the tire surface. If the tire surface has treads, so it's a new tire, so it will have very good friction with the road. If the uh, treads are, are worn out or you, the, the tire has become plain and due to the friction, the rubbing, and then the friction decreases. Road conditions, including skidding. The road conditions, uh, for example, the friction or between the tire and the road depends upon the road condition. For example, the road is dry, then there will be good friction. If the road is wet, for example, there is water. So the friction between the tire and the road will decrease. And when you apply the brakes, the car will skid. Um, uh, the braking force, uh, when you apply the force, uh, the you see the braking force uh, depends upon the friction between the tire and the between the tire and the road. So uh, if you know these things, put a tick here and describe how this thing changes the braking distance, thinking distance, stopping distance of a vehicle. So um, the braking distance is uh, uh, when you have applied the brake and uh, after applying the brake, the distance covered by the vehicle is known as the braking distance and thinking distance is when you uh, see an obstacle in the road and your ma your your mind processes that there is an obstacle on the road and your pair uh, and your your fit go to the pedal so during that obviously the car is moving at a certain speed so it covers some distance so that is the thinking distance thinking distance depends upon the condition of the of the driver and the mental condition of the driver and the braking distance depends upon the, your braking system, the friction on the road between the road and the tire, the tires conditions, braking distance depend upon these things. And uh, stopping distance is the braking distance plus the thinking distance. So um, remember this formula, never forget this, okay? So, so if you know this and you have done some questions on this topic and then put a tick here. Circular motion is described in words how objects move in a circular path and due to a constant force perpendicular to the direction of the travel. And, you know, uh, 
whenever something moves in a in a circle remember this thing is very important sentences when something moves in a circle it 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 its direction is all the time changing it might be moving with a constant uh, speed but uh, its direction of motion is changing so its direction of the velocity is continuous change so to move in a circle you have to change your direction at every instant okay so so to change the direction and uh, we have a perpendicular force acting on a body which is moving in a circle and we call it centripetal force and in our course we don't have to calculate the centripetal force but you have to you should know that centripetal in our course the centripetal force is mostly provided by the friction between the tire and the road and uh, something when something is moving in a circle uh so because there is a resultant force acting uh, on an object when it's moving in a circle towards the center of the circle perpendicular to the direction of the travel so there will be an acceleration produced okay and that will be always towards the center of the circle a very famous question frequently asked in mcq paper some sometime in theory paper also okay apply the ideas about circular motion to electrostatic force or uh, on an electron in an atom so the electron which are revolving around the nucleus they are the, they are revolving because of the electrostatic force of attraction between the negative electrons and the positive nucleus and that electrostatic force provides the centripetal force in the case of the gravitational force on a satellite the satellites are revolving around the earth and the centripetal force uh, is provided by the uh the gravitational force between the satellite and the earth the gravity of the earth provide that and the motion of the planets in the solar system the planets for example the earth the venus the the jupiter the mars they are revolving around the sun so the perpend the centripetal force there which is towards the center of the circle in which they are revolving and they are uh, revolving and uh, they are rotating sorry and uh, in their orbits and uh, that force is provided by the gravitational pull of the sun the gravitational force between the sun and that planet that is the cause of the centripetal force and that keeps them in moving in a circle so if you know these things put a tick here then we have the mass and the, the mass and the weight then the, the first thing state what that mass is a measure of the amount of substance in a body it's a very famous 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 definition normally one one mark two marks it comes that uh, what is meant by mass so don't forget this the amount of amount of substance in a body and state that mass of a body resists change from its state of rest or motion that is called inertia he has not used the word inertia here but remember inertia is depends upon the mass mass depends the more the mass the more the inertia the less the mass the less will be the inertia inertia is the resistance given by a body to any change of in its state of motion so if uh, famous question for if you if you have practiced your paper and you know that if something is moving if you to, if you to try to stop it if you try to change its speed the body will resist and that is called the inertia so and then we have the calculate the weight from the quayan uh, state uh, yeah so calculate the weight is very famous frequently frequently in theory paper comes that the mass is given and they ask you to find out the weight sometimes the weight is given and they ask you to find out the mass w is equals to mg where g is the gravitational field strength which is 10 normally it is 10 newton per kg and the mass is in kgs and the weight is in newtons so frequently frequently comes this in cambridge exams w is equals to mg explain that weights and therefore masses may be compared using a balance okay so the 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 weight is measured with the spring balance uh, uh, we call it the newton meter and the mass is measured with the pan balance or electronic balance and you should okay describe how to measure mass and weight by using the suitable balances we know the balances newton meter is famous balance which is used to find the weight and once you know the weight then you can use the equation w is equal to mg to find the mass the pan balance electronic balance they are used to measure the mass 
and uh, you you sh and and a very important thing is let me see is that uh, the 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 weight is not constant the weight depends upon the location and the g value on that location whereas the mass is constant and it it is uh, it do not change with the change in the location you measure the mass here you measure the mass in murray you measure the mass in new york you measure the mass in london you measure the mass on moon if the same object it will have same mass everywhere but the weight will change if something's weight here in sargodha is different if you take that same object to the mount everest the summit of the mount everest the weight there will be different if you take something into the water its weight will be different due to the thrust and you see if you take it to the moon the value of will be of the weight of the same object will be different on the moon because the g value of on the moon on the earth the g value is 10 uh, newton per kg but on the moon it is 1.67 newton per kg so on the moon the weight will be less so the weight changes with the change in location but the the mass remains same same so gravitational field state that the gravitational field is in a region is uh, is a region in which a mass experiences a force due to gravitational attraction so you should remember this definition of the gravitational field if you know that definition put a tick here okay so the density the describe how to measure a measuring how to use a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of a liquid or solid you see measuring cylinder the use of the measuring cylinder is very uh, sorry the use of the measuring cylinder is very important and uh, in the measuring cylinder you if you are using a liquid you pour that liquid into that measuring cylinder and directly you can read the level of that mercury Uh, that liquid sorry in that cylinder and that will give you the volume and if you want to find out the volume of a solid and if the, that solid do not dissolve in the in the liquid so you can put a what for example you put water in that measuring cylinder note down v1 then you put that solid there and then you again note the, what is the volume now v2 v2 minus v1 that will give you the volume of that solid and sometimes we use the displacement uh, can also the displacement can is a cylinder and that cylinder has a spout it's a pipe it's a hole and that spout uh, we fill the cylinder up to that spout uh, with the water and then under the spout we put a measuring cylinder then we put the solid into that uh, displacement can and obviously when you put a solid in it the level of the water will go up through the spout the, the water which is displaced will come into that measuring cylinder and you note down how much is the water collected in the measuring cylinder that will be equal to the volume of that solid so these are the two methods which we use if you know them you have done questions on them you have written descriptions about these two methods you should put a tick here describe how to determine the density of a liquid you measure the mass of the liquid you measure the volume of the liquid mass for mass you use uh, electronic balance or any kind of balance and for you take the empty cylinder note its mass m1 put the lid in the measuring cylinder note now the mass that will be m2 m2 minus m1 that will be the mass of the liquid and from the measuring cylinder you can measure the volume then you can find the density density will be mass divided by volume very simple a regularly shaped solid it's it's its length and width and height and you can apply the formula mathematical formula if the shape of the solid is regular for an irregular shaped solid uh, which sinks in the water i have told you already we talked about this do calculation using this is the famous uh, formula density is equals to mass divided by volume mostly the density is given um, sometimes the mass is given they ask you to find out the volume sometimes the volume is given density is given they ask you to the find out the mass so remember this formula density is equals to mass divided by volume here there are two kinds of units used if the density is in the grams per centimeter cube then the mass will be grams and the volume will be centimeter cube sometimes the density is kg per meter cube then the mass should be in the kg and the volume should be in the <clears throat> in the uh, i mean a meter cube so if you know these things and uh, you have done questions on this concept put a tick here so my dear student this is the first part of uh, this uh, session and i have the limitation of the zoom i cannot make the video more than of 40 minutes 
so i have to end it here we will make an, another video part b part c um, i don't know how many parts we have to make so but this is very important you see this is that document which we study at the last of uh, when tomorrow you will have your exam the night before we confirm we use this in pakistan <laughs> i do this with my students so uh, in my next video we will start from the topic number 5 so thank you very much everyone hope this will be helpful to you and don't hesitate to like this video and subscribe my channel share the link of this video with your friends and especially with your junior students and all of your friends who are going to appear on uh, on uh, uh, this exam of the cambridge share this video with them thank you very much have a good day i will be back in my next video thank you very much sir have a good day god bless you all